Hello guys and welcome back. In this episode, I'll be building the new side wall assemblies. In the meantime, I'll just explain what's been going on. I've stopped building these because I really want to make sure that when I build the lower side walls, that all the window angles are correct. There's really no point continuing if they don't all fit together. That's exactly where I got to in version two, and I do not want to make that same mistake again. I've already put the plans up on the website for these at www.737diysim.com. A lot of people have already started downloading them, so hopefully I'll get to see a few photos of how you guys are doing on your build. Now the sim has changed location temporarily for the next six weeks. Helen and the children, my family, have flown back to the UK, which has left me house alone for the next six weeks. So this is the dining room, our dining room. I've removed all the dining room furniture and bought the sim in. And hopefully over the next six weeks, we're gonna see a real big change in how the sim looks. And on that note, let's start the build. In front of me here, I have 15 pages of sidewall plans, drawn upon fusion. It's just a simple task now of heading outside and cutting all those bits of wood. As you can see, we're back inside. All the wood has been cut. It took about five hours to cut both the left and right hand side side walls. So here's one stack, and just off camera to your right is another stack of wood ready to be built. Okay, so moving on, first thing I need to do is attach the MDF angle support. And this part, if I look at the diagram, is part three, and that needs to go against there like that. The support block gets mounted to this panel. A line, and then down the center. And the next panel hopefully gets bolted to the flat face. So now we've got the supporting piece on at that end, it's now time to turn to the other end and attach a supporting piece this end. It's a good job this thing hasn't got to fly because this is going to get quite heavy with all this extra wood. But it's the best way to keep the joins absolutely solid in the future. I'm just currently screwing it at the moment just to make sure that this works when it has to go against the window there. I'll eventually come back, take it all apart and then glue it all back together so nothing can move in the future. But for the time being, it's just screws. And this piece is really gonna show us how big it is. there like that, that will go there and that will allow us to mount the top piece. Now if I tilt this up like this, you'll be able to see that this overhangs a fair bit here and here. I left it like that so I can go along with the router later on and just flush trim it to the perfect dimensions. Now 
Now that we manually put the round over on this corner, we need to do this one and the upper edge using a half inch round over. However, word of warning, if you're following my plans, you need to mark 50 millimeters from the bottom and don't take the round over right to the bottom, stop at the 50 millimeter mark and the same around the corner here at 100 millimeters. Otherwise it looks horrid when you've got another piece of wood joining on and you've got a round over onto a straight piece of wood. It'll probably make a bit more sense when we get that far a bit further on but as I can already see the plans I know that I need to stop there with a round over and just around the corner. So this upper edge here can have a round over on it to this point here. I do not want to take the round over past that. These two panels should now fit together. And that's it back from outside and you can see the radius is now on there. It's only rough, I'll make it look a lot prettier later. all built I've marked 25 millimeters in from the leading edge here all the way along and that's where this needs to go Now that's the top complete, I'm going to take it back off, put the round over on this corner and if you look here, this is exactly why we didn't continue the round over all the way across, it would have looked horrid if we did and we stopped it exactly 100 millimetres from the edge and that's to allow this piece of wood to put up against it properly, otherwise you've had a round over following underneath this top section here. Shame I didn't do the same thing down here. Ah well, you live and learn. Okay, so back from outside, yet again, I put the round over on. I've moved onto the floor because the floor is a lot straighter, a lot leveller 
than the table. The table has some serious sag in the middle, so to make sure this goes on perfectly straight, I've moved to the floor. And the last support piece going in. Okay, so before we go any further, I need the baggage bay floor. I'm simply just going to steal it from the old one. Now, as you can see, I've stolen this part, and that, that brings me to the point that I've not actually included this in the plans that I've made here for this section. So, to later on tonight, hopefully I'll remember to add this to the plans. Because actually this was quite a bit of work, making all these angles here for the bags to sit on. That's why I didn't want to make it again. And it was the right size to start with. Now to set this bit so it's more secure and it's still attached to this, I'm just temporarily going to apply this block to the base here. But there actually should be a bottom frame that fits in here that everything screws to. Just for the time being I'm not going to make that because ideally the whole purpose of making this was to make sure that it aligns perfectly with the windows assemblies and everything sits perfectly. So just to get there tonight, we're going to attach this with some long screws put this back on and see how everything goes together. So as you can see, we're nearly there. I'm going to call it quits for this episode, that's quite long enough already. As you can see behind me, this is where I'm at right now, a bit of post editing. If you want to see how I got here, I'll catch you in the next episode. Until then, take care, all the best from the sim.